Hello and welcome to the CDFA's Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure, or RFSI, Pre-Award Matching Funds and Record Retention presentation. As a reminder, this presentation is designed for infrastructure grant applicants that plan to expend pre-award matching funds at their own risk. If that is not you, there is no need to view this presentation. Pre-award costs may be allowable as matching funds with prior approval. All pre-award costs must adhere to Section 8 of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Marketing Services, General Terms and Conditions. Please visit this USDA AMS link for more information. Here is a copy of the complete USDA guidance on pre-award costs linked on the previous slide. Key points. Pre-award costs are allowable when provided in approved budgets with prior written approvals of such costs are necessary for efficient and timely performance of the project scope of work. Such costs are allowable only to the extent that they would have been allowable if incurred after the date of the federal award. If charged to the award, these costs must be charged to the initial budget period of the award. If awarded, a recipient may incur pre-award costs 90 calendar days before the award. Expenses more than 90 days pre-award require prior approval by CDFA and USDA. These costs and activities must be included in the project's narrative and budget justification. All costs incurred before the award are at the potential recipient's risk. The incurrence of pre-award costs in anticipation of an award imposes no obligation on AMS to award funds for such costs. As mentioned in the previous slide, it is required that pre-award costs and associated activities be included in the project's narrative and budget justification as pre-award matching funds to be approved. No costs incurred prior to the submission of an application will be approved. Again, all costs incurred before the award are at the potential recipient's risk. The incurrence of pre-award costs in anticipation of an award imposes no obligation on USDA AMS to award funds for such costs. CDFA highly discourages applicants from incurring costs more than 90 days prior to the grant start date of October 1st, 2024. Note that USDA will make all final decisions regarding allowability and eligibility of costs. Approval by CDFA does not guarantee approval by USDA. Even if a proposal is awarded funding, individual costs may be determined to be unallowable, unreasonable, or unjustified, including pre-award costs, and therefore not included in the approved budget. CDFA and USDA do reserve the right to offer an award amount different than the amount requested. RFSI cannot be used to fund unallowable, ineligible, or un reasonable costs. All matching funds, including pre-award matching funds, are subject to the same requirements as costs directly funded by RFSI. All matching funds must also be reasonable, justified, well-documented, and in support of the project's goals. Matching fund contributions should also be 50% of total proposed project costs, not funds requested unless an applicant has qualified for the reduced match of 25%, again, of total proposed costs. Requirements of pre-award matching funds include, but are not limited to, supporting expansion or improvements to the infrastructure of the middle of the food supply chain for California food and farm businesses and other eligible entities. This refers to stages such as processing, aggregation, and distribution. The commodities must be food system crops and products meant for human consumption, excluding meat, poultry, and wild-caught seafood. Funds from other state grants may be used as matching funds so long as the funds do not originate from a federal pass-through grant and are not committed elsewhere as a matching funds. Salaries may be allowable as match or pre-award match so long as the hourly rates are reasonable and clearly documented. 
Activities performed must be directly related to the purpose of the RFSI project. To speak a little bit more on the salary subject, while reviewing proposals, it has become clear that large and excessive costs associated with grant and project management have been requested. While some grant and project management costs are allowable, CDFA highly encourages applicants to consider whether their project management costs truly require multiple staff to work multiple hours per week. We have seen applications with three to five staff each working 20 or more hours per week on grant and project management activities. Remember that all costs must be reasonable and fully justified. CDFA will not approve excessive costs associated with grant or project management, whether classified as personnel or conceptual costs. One form of pre-award costs is pre-existing equipment, which can be used as match. The value of the use of equipment owned prior to the submission of an RFSI proposal may be used as in-kind matching funds. The justification for this cost must be included in the proposal's budget, including documentation of the process of determining the value of the use of the equipment. All costs are subject to final approval by USDA. The same requirements for eligibility and allowability for RFSI grant funded costs are the same requirements for any matching funds, including pre-award matching funds. Costs that are unallowable for RFSI grant funds are also unallowable for matching funds, including pre-award matching funds. Sample unallowable costs include, but are not limited to, the purchase of land, entertainment costs, contingency or just-in-case costs, pre-harvest costs and activities, retail costs and activities, including direct-to-consumer activities or CSAs, marketing and advertising costs, standard operational costs and activities, or indirect costs charged as direct costs. Examples of indirect costs that should not be charged as direct costs include information technology services, rent, utility, internet services, telephone services, general office supplies, insurance, security services, and maintenance. CDFA has noticed that many proposals contain significant unallowable operational costs. Operational costs are defined as the day-to-day -day costs of doing business. A good way to know if a cost is operational is if a business will continue to pay those costs after the RFSI project. Some examples include the salaries of processing, packaging, and or delivery staff. Salary costs associated with managing these staff, salary costs for general management of a facility, the cost of packaging or other supplies, fuel or freight costs for normal deliveries, and similar costs. While these activities are involved in the middle of the supply chain, operational costs are not allowable. Please remember that RFSI is designed to support expanding or improving infrastructure in the middle of the supply chain only. Infrastructure is defined as physical structures. For the purpose of RFSI, this includes building or refurbishing facilities and purchasing and installing equipment. Only costs associated with these activities are allowable under RFSI. Some minimal salary costs associated with project management, other expansion activities, or training staff on new facilities or equipment may be allowable if properly justified. Again, CDFA will not approve excessive or unreasonable costs. Timekeeping requirements. Part of the timekeeping requirements include activity reports that are required to support salary and wage costs and fringe benefit expenditures charged to the RFSI grants. Each report must account for the total activity for which each employee is compensated, as well as the hours worked on a particular RFSI grant project. A description of activities in support of the grant must be included, and the description must include enough detail to determine whether the activity is project-related 
and whether the hours requested justify the activities completed. Again, CDFA will not approve excessive salary costs. CDFA will share timekeeping templates with successful applicants. Record retention. Record retention and accessibility is governed by 2 CFR 200.334 and 2 CFR 200.337. Recipients must retain financial records, project records, and supporting documentation until May 24, 2030, or until any litigation related to the grant is resolved, whichever is later. All records must be available to CDFA or as designees upon request. Examples of records that must be retained include timesheets and records that reflect the total activity, including descriptions for which each employee is compensated. Detailed invoices from contractors or consultants, including sufficient breakdown of costs and activities. It is the responsibility of the applicant to ensure contractors are providing sufficient detail and breakdown in their recording and invoicing. Actual expenditure invoices of direct costs charged to grant funds. Employee reimbursement claims, including lodging, per diem, and transportation receipts. Documentation supporting calculation or methodology to determine indirect costs. And all other supporting documentation related to the grant agreement. CDFA and USDA have such robust requirements for record retention because it is a crucial component during the grant duration, particularly during the reporting, site visits, and audit or review periods. If awarded, your project will go through a series of reporting requirements, including progress reports, final reports, and remaining fund reports, if applicable. If awarded, the project will also undergo site visits and will also see audits, financial compliance reviews, desk reviews, or agreed upon procedures, which is dependent upon your project. In all cases, proper supporting documentation is needed to verify whether measurable outcomes are being met and that funds are being used for the intended purpose in compliance with the federal cost principles, the grant agreement terms and conditions, in the Grant Management Procedures Manual. So how should one retain these records? Proper record retention should include paper or digital copies of supporting documentation. This includes real and legitimate quotes, contracts, and timesheets with narratives for work performed. Clear descriptions of what the documentation is supporting, including in contractual invoices. And supporting documentation and records should be easily accessible and readily available. Under 36 CFR 1230.12, penalties for unlawful or accidental removal, defacing, alteration, or destruction of federal records or the attempt to do so include a fine, imprisonment, or both. That concludes the pre-award matching funds and record retention presentation. If you have any additional questions regarding these processes, feel free to unmute yourself to speak, drop a question in the Q&A box, or please submit them to grants at cdfa.ca.gov. Thank you.